This video is my second video on the Knit Companion app. And in my first video, I went through the basics of the software and said it was a game changer, and it is. And if you haven't tried it yet, Knit Companion is an app for your device. I'm using it here on my iPad that helps you interact with your patterns really well. It's a way of keeping perfect track of where you are, of making everything customized to exactly the way you want it. I'm especially enjoying the, the zoom in feature. You know, you can pinch in to see something um, because if I don't have my glasses with me, I can make the text really enormous so I can see what I'm doing. Um, it also is a way of, you know, highlighting the row you're on, having your counters going and everything else and closing your tablet. And when you come back the next day to work on it, you know exactly where you are because everything's left exactly the way you left it. Also really helpful if you have multiple projects going on because when you shut down one project, open another and go back to the first, everything's exactly the way you left it. The counters are exactly where you left them, the highlighted row, everything else. It's a game changer. And as I said in the first video, well, let me give you a link to that video because I do recommend watching that one first because I'm not, I'm going to use some of the basics in this video, but I'm not going to explain it as well as I did in the first video. I'll also give you a link in the video description field below. This is uh, the second video in a series. We have more of these videos coming out. It's a, uh, I'm going to give you a link to the playlist where we're gonna have more videos coming. Um, but as I said in the first video, the free version, which is mostly what I cover in the first video, are the tools that you're going to be using the most. Um, you know, using counters and the highlight bar and, you know, bringing patterns in from Ravelry or your Dropbox or whatever. All of these features are the, are the, pat are the features of the software that you are going to be using the very most all the time. And then if you want, you don't have to, because it doesn't have to be, you know, too techy or complicated or anything, but if you want to customize things more, it's all in there. The software actually goes really far with different things that you can customize and features and everything else. And that's what we're going to start getting into this time are the customizable features. Um, if you want to give Knit Companion a try, I can't give you a link to it because you have to go to the app store from your device and search for Knit Companion. It's all one word, no space, and go ahead and give the free version a try. And then if you, uh, you can take a look at the Nick Companion website and I'll give you a link to that for sure, where you can see the different features of the free version and the two paid versions and see if you want to take a deeper dive in some of the stuff that we're going to cover here. Okay, I do actually want to show you the software and the other features. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at my iPad. Okay, I am here on my iPad. I'm gonna go ahead and open Nick Companion. And the first thing I want to demonstrate is rotating a page and I'm here in my projects. I've already opened these patterns as projects. I'm going to use one of my own patterns as an example because it has a good example in there. This is Learn to Knit an Aaron Shawl. And the first page you see is oriented portrait. And the second page, because it's a long chart, it is landscape, but you can't have different orientations within one PDF. So it's kind of sideways. And if I want to work in landscape mode in my iPad, you know, like this, the chart is wrong. It's going the wrong direction. But over here, there's a page with a little arrow. And if I tap that, it will rotate the chart, the page for me, the whole page. It makes it possible for me to see the whole, uh, the, the, the chart, the right direction with the key. And the first page is still oriented the way it's supposed to be. It, did, it only changed the page that I needed rotated. Okay, that is part of the free version of the software. It's in there in case you need it. The next thing I wanna demonstrate is customizing the counters. And for that, I'm going to use this pattern. This is the Lost in a Dream Hooded Cape, the tutorial I released last week. And this has uh, some good examples for us in here. Um, because it has charts and everything else. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to talk about are customizing the counters. And we talked about these in the last video. There are six counters and you advance them just by tapping the number. And it's unlikely that you're going to run into very many patterns in your life that you need all six counters, but they're there if you need them. And it's not uncommon to use two or three because you might have one that's counting rows, one that's counting decreases, one that's counting lace pattern repeats, you know, it's nice to have more. If you hold your finger down on the counter, 
you get the counter name and the, the value. You can jump back one if you had to frog a row, or it will let you reset it to zero here. Now that's just another a, a review of the counters and how they work. I want to talk about setting them up and customizing them a little bit. Across the top here, we have knit, edit, setup. I'm going to tap edit, and we get a bunch of different options over here on the right when we do that. The first thing I'm going to tap is the abacus, and that gives us the counter and the options that we have for customizing the counter. Here on the left, you can roll through the six different counters. We're gonna go ahead and focus on counter one. The first thing I'll change is the name. So I just tap the, the name and uh, the keyboard comes up. Backspace through there. I'm gonna call this one Rose, how original. <laughs> and then we have some more options in here for customizing this. Oh, well, I can also change color. You go ahead and change that too. Uh, this, whoops, I didn't actually do it. There, I changed it to a blue color for no reason. The direction is uh, counting from zero up, uh, and, or I can change it to count from 99 down, and I can also change the numbers in here. This is zero and 999. Um, the reason that you might do that, this is something that I do all the time. I might be working a lace repeat that's like an eight row repeat, and so I'm counting zero to eight, zero to eight, zero to eight over and over again, and just clicking my clicker past nine and 10, or nine every time, and getting back to zero, 10, and then counting up to eight again. You can actually just set this just to count to the number, you know, to eight rows, counting zero to eight over and over again, counting by one. This is also where you can reset the counter or just trash the counter. Um, after you do that, you can customize the other counters. I'll call this one decreases. And I won't bother changing the color on this one. <laughs> but when I'm finished with customizing those, I just tap the knit button again to get back to my pattern and um, my when I hold my finger down on whoops when I hold my finger down I can see the name rose and we called this one decreases okay the next thing is customizing oh actually I want to add a quick key yes okay this pattern has text and charts and you know it has eight pages a lot going on here with this pattern and at the bottom of page eight is the key the commonly used knitting abbreviations this is where i'm going to find you know my uh, ssks and ws's and everything else it's all in here it's entirely possible that i'm over here on page four and i'm uh wondering what PM means. I'm wondering what WS means. And I can tap back over here to eight and see it every time, or I can just put this in the key where it's always up on the screen, or I can access it really easily on the screen. So what I'll do is I'll go back to, or oh, first I'm gonna pull up, pull up the bottom. Remember these keys here, show and hide features the top and the bottom, like this one here, shows me the pages, and this one here coming up from the bottom has a bunch of different things. I am going to tap and hold on this key, and that just made me a quick key. This page is now a quick key that I can access right here in this key section. I'm going to put it exactly where I want it with these abbreviations, right? So this can always be on screen. I can be over here working on four, and here's my row, my setup row, knit 5 p.m. Oh, what's p.m.? Oh, there it is. It's place marker. Oh, what's WS? I don't know why I'm pretending to get so stressed out. <laughs> WS is wrong side. So this is always showing, or I can hide it. Anytime I need to see it, I can pull it up. And I can see where this is handy for the knitting abbreviations. Um, but it also could be handy to have other parts of the pattern. It might be handy to have, you know, the... Sometimes you have the, the rows of a stitch repeat um, that you're using again and again in a pattern. You can always have that available right here where you can access it easily. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you are customizing the sliding markers. 
and the sliding markers are this highlighter bar, it's what I call it, and this blue line. And the way that I'm using the highlighter bar and the blue line is I highlight the row that I'm on, obviously, with the, the highlighter bar. And this blue line, if my pattern's in columns like this one is, I keep it over here. Whoops, I just moved the UR here button. I keep it over here if um, I'm working in this column, and I keep it here if I'm working in this column. That's how I'm using those. You can use them any way you want, of course. Um, I'm going to go back to Edit. And over here in our, our menu, it'll, something that looks just like a hand in the sliding, um, the sliding uh, markers, we have an option of, of changing those up here right now. So the, what's called the stitch slider, I call the blue bar, you can make very wide or very narrow, and you can also change the color, just like we did with the, um, with the row counters. I was actually thinking the way that I use this, I could make it as wide as possible and just cover up the row that I'm not knitting and work on this, but it's not necessary here. Let me put that back to a normal size. You can use it any way you want, of course. And then on this bar, the highlighter bar, which is called a row slider, um, this works really well. I'm thinking of a way that this is really handy, is you can make this wider to cover an entire pattern repeat in a chart like this. Like in this pattern, you repeat rows 12 through 17 over and over again. You can just highlight the whole thing. I think that's pretty nice. Or you can just keep it the way it is and just slide it where you need it. And again, you can change the color and this remains transparent. So you can see through it so it doesn't matter what color you change it to. It's always transparent. Okay, and one more thing to show you. Oh yeah, mystery knit-alongs, MKALs. Um, if you're working on an MKAL, it's usually you get the beginnings of a pattern and um, everybody is knitting along together and the designer will, will release more and more of the pattern. Like every week they'll give you another couple pages of the pattern, right? and you're putting all your hope and trust into this designer that you're knitting something good because you don't know, that's part of the fun, is you don't know what you're knitting yet because the pattern comes out bits by bits. So if you're doing that, you are going to get these PDFs, hopefully to Ravelry, where it's very easy, um, and you can have all these different PDFs in your, uh, in your Knit Companion or, you know, it, printed pages or whatever you're doing, but wouldn't it be handy to just keep adding to the same pattern, adding the next shipment of pages to the same pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that this pattern is my mystery knit along and I wanna add more pages to this pattern. So I'm going to again go up here to edit and over here in these options, there's a PDF symbol and a plus. I'll tap that and it takes it to the PDF files, things that aren't, things that I haven't opened as projects yet. There's PDF files in my software and I can pick any one of these to add. I will go ahead and add um, this other pattern that we were using. So this is my pattern, Learn to Knit Aaron Shell. There is no reason that I would ever need to add this pattern to that pattern. We're just <laughs> using this for demonstration. And right now you see the two pages of the pattern, one and two, and those are both in red, meaning both pages are selected. I can hit this button here and deselect the two pages. I can hit this button here and just select the highlighted page, or this button here will select both pages. And after I've done that, I'm, I, just going to say I want both of these pages to be added. I can tap add selected pages and they will add to my pattern. Now this pattern is part of this pattern. It's all merged together. Very handy if you're doing a mystery knit along. And that is it. Those are some of the customizable features in Knit Companion to help you interact with your patterns. I hope you enjoy it. Watch out for more videos coming. Good luck.